Coming up on iOS Today, Rosemary Orchard is back with us, and we are excited to kick things off by talking about writing smarter with your iPhone and iPad. So stay tuned for some great tips for writing. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is iOS Today, episode 608, recorded Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. Writing smarter with iPhone and iPad. This episode of iOS Today is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Finally, you can enjoy getting an IT education with IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription when you use the code TWIT30 at checkout. And by 8sleep. Go to 8sleep.com slash iOS for exclusive 4th of July savings through July 10th. And if you're listening after July 10th, use the same URL to check out the Pod Pro cover and save $150 at checkout. And by Nomad. Go to nomadgoods.com slash iOS today and use the promo code iOS today for 10% off your first purchase of any Nomad accessory. They have Apple watch straps, wireless chargers, ultra durable cables, and more. This is a limited time offer. Welcome back to iOS Today. Of course, this is the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, watchOS, so many OSs that Apple has on offer, and we love to talk about them here on iOS Today. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I am Rosemary Orchard. Hi, everyone. Welcome back, Rosemary. We are excited to have you. Of course, uh, thank you to Chris Lawley for subbing in last week. We had a great show, but uh, I always do love to get to do the show with you. So I'm glad you're back this week. Oh, thank you. I always love podcasting with you too. And I'm glad that Chris filled in nicely for me. He's a really great person. So I'm glad some more people got to meet him through iOS today as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you can go check out his work on YouTube. Just look for Chris Lawley. I think that's L, yeah, L A W L E Y. Uh, so let's get into things this week. You uh, sent me a text with a good idea for what we could talk about because we've talked in the past about using apps and services uh, on your iPad to uh, to do writing. And we've even, uh, I think there was an episode where Dan Morin was on, who is a professional writer, and he shared some of his uh, apps to use. But there's more to it than simply just using apps. There's writing smarter with your devices and using the different things that iOS and iPadOS offer to kind of improve upon the experience and to kind of link between the different apps that you're using and make sure you're kind of getting the best overall uh, output that you can from the writing that you're doing. So let's kick things off with um, the the sort of simple way of, of improving upon how you write on the iPhone and iPad. And that is with the built-in notes app. Yeah, it is. And it's one of those things, I think people keep forgetting how great notes has become over time because originally notes was just, well, text in a note and it wasn't really a lot else. But as we've gone on over time, we've gone away from that skeuomorphic design. We've still got a little bit of paper texture here to an app that's really got a lot of great features. So if you want checkboxes for things that you can, you know, check on and off, um, you know, whether they be nonsense things or not, then you can do that. And you can also enable automatic sorting. So if you've got a huge big list, then those checked items will go down to the bottom. But as well as that, you know, you can't just add tables if you want to, or, you know, um, outside of those tables, you've got all of the different formatting options for titles and headings and subheadings. And the best part of notes is, especially if you're trying to write smarter, not necessarily more, is you can share. And I really love being able to share a note or an entire folder of notes with somebody else. So if I was trying to create some sort of super secret uh, plan for iOS today, I could do that with Micah. We could have an entire folder full of notes and share it between us because, of course, you know, sharing a problem makes it easier to solve usually. And so that's one easy way to write a little bit smarter. Don't have to do it all yourself. You can share that with somebody else. And combined with things like fixing your text replacement in settings app, that means that notes for a lot of people just fills the gap of somewhere to put text quickly and easily. And 
don't forget as well. I I, I always forget about this uh, until somebody reminds me. It's in the control center. You can put it in your control center on your iPhone and your iPad so that you can just go in and tap and bam, straight into a brand new note so that you can easily capture something. And I really feel like that is a feature that people maybe really need in their lives, but forget about occasionally. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, sort of all of the the new fancy uh, shortcutting for getting into notes with the quick notes feature that's available across uh, all the different platforms now, um, it, it in fact, in the next version of iOS, it'll be coming to the iPhone, but uh, it exists on the iPad, exists on the Mac. And it is a, a way to kind of quickly create a note that is a functionality that makes it so that no matter where you are, you can kind of capture a thought that you're having in the moment and make it so that it's tied to the other uh, bits of information that you are kind of cataloging right there. So it, it depends, or rather it doesn't depend, regardless of how you choose to sort of go through your writing process. Maybe you're in sort of the information gathering stage, or you are, uh, you know, trying to put together a, a, a a research paper, all of that information can kind of be gathered rather quickly and easily without having to fully hop into one specific app. Uh, and, you know, you can kind of come back to it at any time that you'd like. I love uh, that new functionality that Apple added, I think, in uh, iOS 15. Yeah. Um, I do just want to take a quick moment to mention because that quick note gesture, I know frustrates a lot of people. You know, they accidentally touch in the bottom right corner of their iPad and there's a new note and then it sticks around, but then it's not there when they need it. If you go into settings and then notes, then under corner gestures, you can turn on and off, allowing your finger to swipe from the corner. So for me, from the right corner at the moment, um, it will bring in a new note. Um, and and that's a feature, but especially for anybody who's got um, motability issues or similar, you can just tap and toggle that off, and then that feature will not come back to haunt you if you're looking <laughs> to get rid of that. Though, of course, it is worth taking a, a look to see. You know, you can just turn off the left corner or just the right corner if that's the one that you accidentally trigger and swap the screenshot and the note feature around if you prefer. Um, but it's worth having a look in the settings for the notes app in general just to see maybe what features you've missed um, because you were too busy quick capturing information to read the helpful pop-up that notes threw in your way when you were trying to write. <laughs> Get out of my way. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. I mean, again, we've we've talked before kind of about notes in general um, and sort of the the new things that get added, we always try to stay on top of what Apple adds to uh, its built-in notes app. But it's just worth checking in from time to time because Apple is uh, iterating on it constantly and adding new fun features or new important features to make the writing experience there uh, work well. And I just, I like that it syncs across all of my different devices and it's kind of just, I don't have to think too much about it and can easily pull it up when I need to uh, and make sure that that text is there. There's uh, um, my partner and I use Instacart, uh, for our grocery delivery, uh, almost exclusively. And when we do, um, because of the way that the townhome complex that I live in is set up, it gets, it's very confusing. The building numbering doesn't make sense and it's hard to find different places. And so, uh, I, I found that it is helpful to always send the Instacart person, um, a bit of more information on how to actually navigate and get to where our home is uh, versus just letting them use the GPS uh, that is built into the app. And that has proven itself uh, true because now we don't have groceries delivered to the wrong house like we used to, all of that kind of thing. Uh, and the way that uh, I set it up is it's a very simple, um, reusable bit of text and a couple of images that we send. And I've got like a sort of a map that shows you go this way and then you go that way with arrows and everything. And so I just created a note that uh, I made into a shared note that has that text in there. And so all we have to do is just copy from there and paste it in uh, whenever we need to. And of course, there are mm, uh, other ways that, could, that one could do that. I could use the text expand feature that's built into iOS or uh, some sort of shortcut that would maybe even go as far as to automatically do it, uh, copy it to the clipboard when I launch Instacart or what have you. Uh, but 
that uh, shared note makes it very simple for both my partner and I to grab that text. So I just think notes is great for uh, multi-user work, for single user work, and for making sure that all of that text is on every device that you're using. Yeah, I might actually uh, detour a little bit in Shortcuts Corner, Micah, to show you how you can use the shared note and shortcuts to copy that automatically, because I think that, that might be a pretty cool workflow for people, because I bet other people have got things they need to share on a regular basis. And don't forget, Notes has the ability to just share a link to a note as well for viewing it, um, which can be really helpful too. Nice. All right. Next is drafts. I know so many folks who use and la 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 love drafts. And I believe you are one of them. Tell us about drafts and how it can help you write smarter on your devices. Well, the idea behind drafts is every time you open drafts, you just get a brand new blank draft. And you can configure this in the settings to, to say, you know, how quickly it should create a new draft. So for example, on my Mac, I've got it set to about 10 minutes because frequently if I'm taking notes on my Mac, I'm going to be gathering information for longer rather than, you know, just quickly taking uh, notes. And the other thing that you can, of course, do with drafts is when you go to create a note. So I'll just open uh, Safari here and um, maybe I'll go to a little website called twit.tv and then I just just uh, open the slash iOS section, then there's this great website which has all of our notes on it, Micah. It's got links to all the apps we talk about. It's amazing. But if I'm sharing this, um, then in drafts, what I can do is I can actually um, not just save it as a new draft. That's what it defaults to, but I can also select a draft. So if I just save this one quickly so that I have a draft, then when I go and I share this again, assume I was sharing a different link, please. Um, then what I could do is just select a draft and then I can just append it straight to that. Or I could say, put it at the start of it, um, whichever I prefer so that I have that information. And it makes gathering links especially very useful. Um, but something that, um, you know, is very evident in drafts, which maybe people have forgotten about, is if you have an Apple Pencil, you can just start writing. Um, and unfortunately, this iPad, I don't have an Apple Pencil for. My iPads with Apple Pencil support are running iOS 16, which is proving slightly problematic with screen sharing for iOS today. Um, but you can just write into this space. But what I really love is you can create these action groups. So I've got actions over here on the right, and I've actually got a little area above the keyboard. And I've set these to be the same because I just want to show people how easily um, you can quickly add a new action in drafts. So I'll just tap on the plus and create a new action. And this is something that requires the drafts premium. Um, but um, it's $19.99 a year and in my opinion, well worth it. And what I'll just do is I'll add a step um, and then you kind of do many things. But one of my favorite things to do is to create little templates with just inserting some text. And so I'm just going to create one that inserts the text, hello, Micah, um, and tap save and exit. And now... Because I've set this action group to appear both on the right and above the keyboard, I can press either of these buttons and it's just going to insert this for me every single time I tap it. Well, imagine you have 10 or 15 of these things that you need to be able to insert really quickly and easily. Maybe you always want to format your date in a specific way. Well, that's something that you can do with this, um, which is really, really helpful when you've got lots of those things that you need. So I have, of course, many action groups and drafts, which allows me to do things like automatically inserting whole blocks of text and popping up and asking me for information and filling different things out and creating different magical templates based on that. But one of the things that you can do is just create a very simple insert text action, which just inserts that little bit of text that you reuse again and again and again. Um, and, you know, you don't have to get fancy, but it is quite nice to be able to see it and edit it in a slightly larger window than there is in the settings um, so that you can do that. And of course, if you wanted to, then you can have multiple steps. So it can insert the text and then it could, you know, um, create a new draft and insert some text into that draft for you if you wanted, or just straight up insert some more text after that. And you've got them split up so that you can um, reuse bits of them in different places if you wanted to. Um, but that's it. It's very simple to use. And I think it's, you know, I, it's one of my favorite apps, uh, not just because uh, it's made by an, a great indie developer, but because it's got support uh, for lots of different theming. I can say that I write in Markdown or I'm writing in plain text or multi Markdown or task paper or I'm writing JavaScript or I'm writing template or custom. Like some people have written their own custom 
syntax wow. for drafts, like Markdown on steroids with extra steroids and extra stuff in there. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm genuinely impressed. I've not quite gone down that rabbit hole yet. I've been restraining myself because I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of time playing with that when I get into it. But that said, it's it's a really useful app for all sorts of things. And you can customize it to help you write really smartly whenever you want or need to. And then, of course, because Drafts is a place where text starts, you can keep it in Drafts. There's tagging, there's support for workspaces, which select action groups and, and specific tags as filters for you. Or you can just share it to something else. You can put it in Apple Notes. You can put it in Obsidian or Ulysses, or you can send it to the internet. You can put it into a Google Doc or Dropbox or Dropbox Paper, um, whatever you like. There's so many options. Um, and one feature I forgot to mention, which I love, that dictation, which kind of times out a little bit on iOS 15 after a while, in drafts, it just never ends. It loops until Ooh. you're finished, which is really nice. Um, and Dictation is getting better in iOS 16, but I kind of feel like I'm going to be using drafts for that sort of thing for quite a while when I'm writing longer bits of text with my voice. Absolutely. Yeah, that I, I know that that is a huge standout feature for a lot of people. Um, and it, it, I will say in testing, iOS 16 does definitely improve upon dictation and sort of not timing out as often. Uh, but it's not as uh, I mean, again, drafts has been doing it for a long time and doing it well, I think. Um, all right. The next one I think is one that is what's the word I'm looking for. It's a bit of a, um, it's a, it's a bit of a power user tool, but it's also one that I think a lot of apps are trying to get into. And it's all about connecting your notes together. Uh, we're going to talk about obsidian which is used for connecting your notes together in kind of a Wikipedia style. But before we get to Obsidian, I do want to take a quick break so I can tell you about IT Pro TV because, you, as you might imagine, IT Pro TV is sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. Look, there are a lot, there are plenty of IT training platforms you could go to. But the question is, do they have the most up-to-date content? That's the big question. Of course, you want to make sure that these companies are providing you with exactly what you need. You can get the best possible IT training and certifications with IT Pro TV. Get training and certified on your own schedule. With their virtual labs and practice tests, you'll always be supported and prepared for your exams. You can binge episodes in 20 to 30 minute increments. They have more than 5,800 hours of IT training that is always up to date with the most current content, which of course is important in this fast paced world. One reviewer says, most engaging hosts I've ever Ever watched. I highly recommend IT Pro TV to not only IT professionals, but also to people who have interest in IT but don't know where to start. Very educational and entertaining. I can confirm that. I am not in the IT world and I don't really have any interest uh, to be an IT person, but what I am interested in is IT tech. And so watching these videos just scratches that itch. It's very nice uh, to just kind of learn about new things and be entertained while being being educated. That's that is literally everything I desire. Uh, you can check out one of their newest courses, which is the CompTIA A Plus Core 1 and Core 2 series. This is designed for professionals who support today's core technologies from security to networking to virtualization and more. CompTIA's A Plus certification is an industry standard for launching IT careers in today's digital world. You can learn about hardware, operating systems, networking, security, and troubleshooting. IT Pro TV has two free webinars for you to check out right now on demand. It includes the future of project management with Chris Ward and Kelly Mack and all things cybersecurity, hacking your way into the field with Daniel Lowry and Zach Hill. Don't forget about your IT team, by the way. Check out an IT Pro TV business plan for your team today. Visit itpro.tv slash twit for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription when you use the code twit30. That's IT itpro.tv slash twit and use code twit30 for an additional 30% off for the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV, build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey. Thanks so much to IT Pro TV for sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. And now let's get connected with Obsidian. Rosemary, tell us about Obsidian. I love this app. 
Oh, so Obsidian is an app that suddenly became very, very popular on Windows and Mac OS. And it took a little while to come out on iOS. And it's one of those applications on iOS that some people love and some people are going to hate because it is an Electron app and it doesn't look like an iOS app. And so I'm going to pop it up on screen for anybody who's watching at home. But if you've used Obsidian before on any device, then you'll realize that Obsidian looks and pretty much feels exactly the same whatever device you're using it on, which is both an advantage and a bit of a flaw sometimes. Um, personally, I'm fine with it because of the power of this app. Um, and there are a number of great features built into it. Of course, there's syncing, which you can do for free via iCloud. The app itself is free. There's also the Obsidian Sync service at $10 a month, um, or you can use Drop Dropbox, but unfortunately not on iOS because Dropbox's API just doesn't work uh, like that. Unfortunately, they've yet to make it uh, support folders uh, for various applications, which is a shame, but I, I, I can see why the Obsidian folks have yet to be able to work around that significant limitation. But what I love about this is that what I can do from any individual um, note, so I'll just create um, a test note here, um, is I can copy a universal link and then keep that link so that I can reuse it again and again. Um, and so if I copy this Obsidian URL, and you know, Drafts does have this feature as well, but it's not quite intended to work in the same way. If I paste this URL, then whenever I tap on this somewhere else, it'll open this vault, which is essentially a folder um, on my iPad, and open this particular file um, for me. And I can cross-link these things. So if I created a different note, then I could say um, that um, this references, um, and I'm just squeezing around my microphone here, um, and I'll just pop in some round brackets here because this is markdown to say um, this reference is that. But I can also just make magic links whenever I want using sort of tags. So if I said hello world and I just did the uh, the square brackets, then I can see various things I might have linked before. But if it doesn't exist yet, that's okay. I can still link it. It's a bit grayed out, but then when I tap on it, it creates a new note for me. And this is a new note. Um, so I can easily link my stuff together without having to actively go ahead and think about things. And then it builds this really crazy graph um, so that I can see all of the different links together. Um, obviously, because this is a, a test uh, vault, I don't have many links, but there is actually a link between world and reference, which have appeared as two separate circular nodes on my screen. And I have another one called test note and a demo template, which aren't linked to anything. Um, and of course, I can I can filter these things here to say, you know, anything to tags or, or whatever, but I don't need to do that necessarily. What I can do is I can also create something from a template. Um, and this is a feature that is built in to Obsidian, but it's not enabled by default. So if you pop into the settings, which is in the bottom left, and then you go to the core plugins and then scroll down, there's um, an option called templates where you can insert template content from a folder of template files. And if you enable this, then you get some settings options so you can create, so you choose your folder. So I've called my folder templates. And you can also specify a, a date format and a time format, um, which um, you know I've I've left as the defaults. Um, but now I can insert this. Um, and so the funny thing is, uh, Mike, I actually use um, a different enhanced templates plugin. So I've actually forgotten how this works. Um, but it is uh, da, 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 there is an option for it, um, which I am completely and utterly unable to see right now. Um, Yes, it's it's hidden in the the options. I've been playing with the the keyboard on this device to try and uh, show up some different uh, actions here. But if I change them, then I would actually see the the inserting template option. There it is. Templates insert current date and insert current time are both options there. So uh, now here I will just be able to scroll across and insert my date and insert time based on the timestamps and then the actual template itself, um, I can also insert as well. Um, and I like this because if you've got meeting notes that you always keep in the same format or similar, then you can just reuse that again and again. You can create one note, then maybe copy it into a template, delete the bits that you know, you'll know you fill in every time, add some placeholders to automatically enhance um, your um, date, um, to automatically expand your date or similar. And, um, you know, that that's kind of it. You're done. Um, and so then um, 
you know, then then you don't have to worry. So I've just uh, realized my fault. I'd actually put my template, my uh, demo template in uh, the main folder instead of inside the, oh. uh, the template folder, which is, of course, a silly mistake to make. Um, and then I should be able to just uh, insert from my template. Um, oh. oh, dear. My, uh, my iPad is unfortunately <laughs> just crashed. I might need to reboot that in a moment. Um, but Yes, it's it's a great app that I recommend looking at. I particularly love the fact that it syncs across all of your devices so that whatever platform you're on, even Linux, yes, they have Linux support as well, then you can use this. Um, so yeah, it, it's a great app. It's free to download, so it's worth checking out. And it does do its best to be a really great editor. But the thing that you don't need to worry about is at the end of the day, you've got a folder with text files inside of it. They're Markdown formatted files, but they're text files. So you'll be able to take that and use that with any other application like Ulysses or IA Writer or, you know, even import them into notes if you wanted to. Um, so you don't need to worry about starting to use an app and then being stuck with all the data being inside of it. All of the options that we've looked at today have got great export options and Obsidian is no exception to that rule. Now, that is so. That's one way of of thinking of things is sort of these uh, these notes that all are tied together and can kind of reference one another to create a body of knowledge. Um, in fact, uh, Obsidian one of the the sort of base properties of Obsidian is that it's based on what's called Zettelkasten, which is this um, idea of kind of creating a brain outside of your brain that is meant for storage of different ideas, different thoughts different uh, words that you learn over time, basically your body of knowledge existing in a physical space that you can then reference and find and connect the dots between these different things. Um, but instead of the sort of notes and the, the notes and the uh, texts, there's also uh, sometimes a need for folks to create um, full on books and scripts and transcripts and kind of go all in on their mobile devices. And uh, there was probably a time where that was a little bit harder. Um, but now there are apps that let you kind of do the whole thing and try their best to be uh, the full featured manuscript app. Uh, so that is my prolonged introduction of the next one we're talking about, which is Scrivener. Tell us about this very powerful app. Yeah, if you've heard of National Novel Writing Month, which happens every year in November, then you probably have heard of Scrivener, at least in passing, because Scrivener is one of the sponsors of National Novel Writing Month. And if you complete your novel, then you can get a discounted license for macOS and Windows for Scrivener, because Scrivener isn't just on iOS. Um, it's also on the Mac and Windows as well. And it's made by this great company whose name I love, Literature and Latte like just combining those two things that so many people love of novels and coffee. Um, so the idea behind Scrivener is every book or body of text, big body of text um, that you create is a project. And so I'm going to use the tutorial one here. I've deliberately not synced everything over from all of my previous writings because there's so many projects, which I mean, they're not dead yet, but they haven't quite, you know, formed into their full blossoming swan uh, <laughs> uh, outcome is perhaps a, a good way to put it. But if I open a project, then it's a binder. So if you think of like a physical binder that you would have on your shelf, um, and then you would get it out and you'd open it up, you can have dividers in there and you can have sections. And then inside of those sections, you can have smaller sections. And the great thing about a divider, uh, a binder is that you don't actually have to have, um, you know, full size paper in there. You can just like have bits that just like clip onto one or two of the rings and put them in there. But you can kind of do the same thing with Scrivener because what it'll do is it, as I drill down into these various sections, I can view these um, and then I can actually like get them all stuck together in the end. Um, so if I if I um, just sort of view this whole, the basic section, then I'm actually seeing like the rest of the novel as well. If I scroll up and scroll down, not just where I am, it's taken me to the bit that I'm looking at, but it's not just that part. Um, and this is what I really like because you can make things as small as you like. 
really as small as you like. Um, and not only that, but you can also view things in a number of different ways. Um, so if I um, pop over into the binder, then it's got two cards and it's just showing them to me as index cards. And those index cards will then, you know, expand to go um, into their full sections. But this is really useful, especially if, say, you're writing a dissertation. This is actually how I wrote my dissertation, Micah. Um, oh, really? I used Scrivener, um, at least to start with. Unfortunately, I had to convert it into a Word document um, towards the end of the process so that my dissertation supervisor could go uh, through it with me, dissertation being my undergraduate thesis um, in the UK. Um, but I wrote it because it was really great. I had all these bits of knowledge here and there. And I wasn't quite sure, you know, like what the best place to put these was. Um, and so instead, I would, you know, just play with the various different areas and put them out on index cards and drag them around and just sort of rearrange them into the areas that made sense. Just So to start with, my binder just had hundreds and hundreds of all of these different bits of information in. And then I kind of loosely grouped them together by chapter and category and things like that. And then, you know, went down further. And not only that, but Scrivener also allows you to have supporting documents. So whenever I'd written something and I was like, oh my God, this is really great, but this doesn't belong here. This isn't the right place to put it. I could just drag it out and shove it in one of the other sections that I wasn't using right now. So I actually had a bit for, um, you know, don't want to lose this. I think I literally called it don't want to lose this. Um, and uh, yeah, and then, you know, I kept those in there. This has templates in here. There's also a section for research. This is the tutorial um, one. So um, it's got lots of different bits in. And of course, it's got trash. So if I deleted something, like, for example, um, this uh, and finally section, which I would be able to delete... Um, uh, uh, I've managed to, uh, there we go, uh, move to trash. Perfect. Then there isn't a delete. It just moves it to the trash. So now I can see inside of the trash that there is something else. And, you know, if I've deleted something, then it's right there. But for bits of text that I was trying to keep, then, you know, I, I was able to do that. You can have bookmarks to your text. It does integrate on the Mac with, um, I believe Zotero, um, and, um, I, I believe bookends as another referencing piece of software, but it's just a great way to write and to be able to break things down into as small as you need. But then if you want to see more, you can, you can just take a step back and, and see more information or you can, you know, move it around in, in small blocks or whatever it is that helps. And I found that this was a very good digital way of taking the bits of paper that I was trying to do this with on paper and put it into a form where I wasn't just constantly like, oh, darn it, I've left that post-it note behind. I, you know, I, I've lost this section now type thing. That's that's the bit I was struggling with during my dissertation. So Scrivener helped by making it work for me. Um, I, totally, totally, totally. Uh, the next app, I actually want to kind of break into a category of two apps. Um, and I'll kick things off because... Um, That'll give you a, a chance to have a little break here. Um, I use an app uh, very regularly um, called IA Writer. And IA Writer is an app that lets you um, create markdown uh, documents on your devices. Uh I don't remember how much I paid for it back when I purchased it. It's currently available for $49.99. Um, and that's because IA Writer kind of sets itself apart from the other one, the one you're going to talk about in a moment, uh, by not having a uh, built-in uh, subscription method. And instead, you just pay for it once up front. And then you are, are you know, you've got the app. Um, IA Writer is... I mean, again, I use it all the time as my app for uh, for creating the show notes for the different uh, shows that I produce. So Windows Weekly, for example, uh, the Tech Guy, uh, Tech News Weekly, um, all of those have their own little folder in IA Writer. And I uh, have those kind of documented going back uh, through through the history of me working at Twit uh, with all of the different show notes. And the reason that I like it is because I learned Markdown um, when I worked uh, for Renee Ritchie at Mobile Nations. Um, in order to get that job, I had to learn Markdown. And so um, 
after that, I like Markdown just clicks with me. It makes sense to me. And so I do a lot of writing in that way. And so this just helps me kind of collect the notes that I need to and not have to worry about, uh, as, uh, as the IA writer website is kind of showing, it's all about being able to have a focused environment for writing. And the company just recently added, uh, what is called, or what, what, we know as uh, sort of wiki links. And again, those are those links that let you connect between documents. So IA writer gets a little bit obsidianified with that. Now, the if you look online uh, at the, the the video, it'll show uh, it says now with lasers. And what they're what they mean when they say lasers is that the wiki links are linked between documents and they just have these fun lasers kind of linking between the different things. Um, there are lots of fun features built into IA Writer, including uh, the ability to change kind of how your documents look whenever you view them in preview mode versus viewing them in uh, the markdown mode, uh, file extension methods. And what I like is that it's a very simplified file saving structure. So all of these are just stored in my iCloud drive and are all in their own little area. And then I can go in at any time and make adjustments uh, uh, on any of my documents, or excuse me, on any of my devices, because I've got IA Writer on all of those devices. Uh, there are also some built-in uh, publishing things. If you have certain types of accounts, uh, they let you publish directly to Ghost, Medium, Micro.blog, Micropub, and WordPress. So those are easy to publish to right from there. And then um, the there are some really nice built-in uh, methods for seeing, like if you were writing actual, uh, for, for example, if you're writing a book or something like that, uh, there are some really great built-in um, bits for, or when I used to write articles for being able to see syntax. So it'll show you uh, all, the number of adjectives in your piece. It'll help you uh, kind of figure out the different um, style methods, including looking for fillers, cliches, redundancies, and you can even create some custom patterns if you'd like um, with your own rules and exceptions. So pretty, pretty neat stuff that's built directly into it and uh, pretty nice ability to kind of change things as you need to. Uh, so that is IA Writer. I wanted to give them a shout out as that is the app that I use almost every day of my life. Um, and it's just that it sits in the background, you know, so I don't, I don't necessarily think of it uh, front of mind. Uh, but it is a very powerful tool that is constantly getting updates. And yes, uh, for folks who aren't into the subscription uh, way of doing things, this is kind of the uh, primary markdown writer that is available uh, for a one-time $50 purchase uh, on, on your devices. So that's IA Writer. Rosemary, tell us about Ulysses. Well, Ulysses is one of those apps. It's up there with Scrivener. And often if uh, Scrivener is mentioned, then somebody who loves Ulysses will chime in and say, and Ulysses can do that too. And it can. It is a great app. Um, and it is uh, it is a subscription application. But there is good news. If you are one of the users of Setup, then it uh, can be included in your Setup subscription. So my trial has expired on this device, um, So, um, which is going to make uh, this is a little bit tricky, um, but it is essentially very similar to IA Writer in many ways, but with a slightly different um, user interface so that you have the ability to, you know, just see and sort of merge notes together the same way that Scrivener can, um, but also um, to be able to just play around with your bits of text and just take things out of a folder, which I genuinely really love because that does make life a lot easier. Um, if you do just want to be able to have a pile of files, essentially, that you can then uh, sync uh, around between your devices and do things with. But what where Ulysses really excels is being able to take more complex documents that you create in Ulysses format and just play with them and put them together so that you can export them. And I'm just struggling to type in my uh, iCloud password here to uh, restore my purchase. So um, I'll just see if that one worked. There we go. Done. Perfect. It's just restoring my purchase now so I can actually show some people who uh, might be watching the video. But Ulysses essentially will allow you to 
do whatever it is you want with text almost. Um, so you can set a goal for your text every day where you can either write a certain number of words or you can spend a certain amount of time writing or you can have a goal set on a section so that this section should be about 5,000 words. And this could be really useful for those, uh, for for example, students writing um, academically who need to have a certain word count for certain sections. And no matter how big your project gets, it, it's going to work. Um, there are you know, plenty of professional authors who are using this tool on a regular basis. Um, it's got proofreading and editing built in and it works really well. And what, what, what a lot of people really love about it is while you write in Markdown, um, you don't necessarily see it. It kind of hides it a little bit from you, which can be very nice. So you can keep little bits of it to reuse and you, you're not seeing all of the underlines or the stars or the square and the round brackets around things as you go. Um, so uh, I'm just going to create a brand new document um, inside of Ulysses on my device. Um, and you can see I can create a new sheet or a new material sheet or I can import something. Actually, I'll just pop back over to the introduction because I think that this um, shows it quite well. So, you know, I'm seeing a little bit of markdown. I can see if I tap into this area that there are two hashes next to the word welcome, which indicates that this is a level two heading but it's grayed out. So I'm not really seeing it. And it's just formatted that for me, which is very nice. And then I can go ahead here and I can see my stats about this information. I can navigate around if there's an outline automatically created and updated based on the headers in the documents. So if I added uh, another header here, um, and I'm just struggling to see my keyboard because it's it's hiding behind the uh, screen. Um, so there we go. If I had a level three heading, then it's indented that automatically underneath um, for me, which is just really useful. And then you can also add attachments where you can add notes to things and you can add images. So depending on how you write and what it is that you're trying to do, it's very easy. And you can always tap and create a brand new note at any point and then, you know, link them together and handle that as part of a project later. So I can create a new group um, and put it all together. And, and if I want to, then I can just export all of this easily as well. So very similar to IA Writer in many ways. Um, but I, I should remind folks, um, it is uh, $49.99 a year. But if you've got Setup, um, then do check it out because you, you may end up having Ulysses as part of Setup already, um, depending on how the iOS um, setup that you've got works for that. So it's worth looking at. And uh, it's a great app for those people who want all of that power available. And it, it works really nicely on iPhone as well. Um, it's one of those big, powerful text applications that you're actually happy that they've got a, a customized iOS version for the iPhone 4. Sometimes when you've got a custom iOS version, Micah, I don't know about you, but I often find like they've hidden that feature that I need. <laughs> Why is this not here? But Ulysses, it, it's always there. Um, so that it's just, you know, they've rearranged things to make sure it's there for you. Um, all right. We are going to take one more quick break before we come back with an exciting announcement that uh, Apple me recently made along with an update uh, to its apps. And that is kind of the that was the inspiration for this episode of iOS today. Uh, so we will get to that momentarily. But first, I want to tell you about a very awesome sponsor of this week's episode of iOS Today. It's Eight Sleep. Good sleep is the ultimate game changer, and the Eight Sleep Pod is the ultimate sleep machine. Consistent good sleep can help reduce the likelihood of serious health issues. It can decrease the risk of heart disease. It can lower blood pressure, and it can even reduce the risk of Alzheimer's. Yet still more than 30% of Americans struggle with sleep and temperature is one of the main causes of poor sleep. Look, I so I used to do a podcast uh, on sleep science and dreams. And in the kind of the, the whole reason that I wanted to do that podcast was because I am super fascinated by sleep science. I think it's one of the most interesting fields of science and one of the most important fields of science, because what I came to learn is that, you know, we all say sleep is so important. And, you know, you should really get your 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 Z's in, in. But what we don't know, I think, is truly how incredibly important sleep is. It is the most important thing. You need to get sleep. You need to get good sleep. And it turns out that our sleep is affected heavily by the temperature of our body while we are sleeping. 
And so I used to have this issue where I would go to sleep and I'd wake up in the middle of the night and be so hot. Uh, and I like, for some reason, I have to sleep with covers over me. So I'd be so hot and just sweating. Awful, not fun to wake up like that and have to uh, deal with that and then go back to sleep and then wake up again and have the same situation. And it just was, it, it's not fun. And the AC would be running, everything would be, you know, cool in the room, yet my body would get so hot still. That does not happen anymore because of my eight sleep pod pro cover. So I've got one on my bed and I've set it to get nice and chilly cool overnight while I sleep. And it actually drops in temperature uh, over the course of the night, depending on my sleep cycle. It has so improved my sleep, making sure that I can get in my full hours without waking up a bunch uh, throughout the night because I'm so hot. Ugh, that does not happen. Uh, and in fact, not only that, but on top of being able to fall asleep and stay asleep, you can fall asleep faster. And that is because of the pod pro cover. It is the most advanced solution on the market for thermoregulation. It pairs dynamic cooling and heating with biometric tracking. So you can add the cover to any mattress and start sleeping as cool as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Some of you feel the need to go to bed with the uh, with it being a lot warmer. And I understand, but I'm telling you, once you're asleep, you should let the uh, Pod Pro cover do the work of cooling things down because that is what's going to get you your best sleep. So if you just want to be cozy, snuggly while you're going to bed, that's fine. But once you're asleep, the Pod Pro cover can go ahead and take things to a better area for you. Uh, the result of all of this working together uh, as it focuses the the temperature based on your sleep stages, your biometrics, the bedroom temperature even, uh, the result is that eight sleep users experience up to 19% increase in recovery, a 32% improvement in sleep quality, and 34% more deep sleep. And folks, deep sleep is the most important sleep that you can get. Well, there's an argument that it's deep sleep and REM sleep, but we know for a fact that deep sleep is the restorative stage of sleep. It is the stage where your body works to recover everything throughout you. So your brain uh, goes through a recovery process. Your muscles go through a recovery process. Everything is working to kind of recuperate you. And as we get older, that, that stage of sleep shortens and shortens and shortens and shortens. And so our body doesn't recover as much. And that is a big part of aging and uh, some of the diseases that we experience as we get older. So getting more deep sleep when you can, uh, heck yeah, let's make that happen. With more deep sleep, then you and I can be confident that my mind, my body, they're all moving through those restorative sleep stages that you can make sure that you've got that uh, physical recovery, hormone regulation, and mental clarity. Uh, so all you have to do, if this sounds good to you, it absolutely should, it's amazing, is go to 8sleep.com slash iOS for exclusive 4th of July savings through July 10th. Cool down this summer with 8 Sleep now shipping within the USA, Canada, and the UK, as well as select countries in the EU and Australia. If you're listening after July 10th, no worries. Use the same URL, 8sleep.com slash iOS, to check out the Pod Pro cover and save $150 at checkout. Man, oh golly, I think everybody should be checking out 8 Sleep. It is so worth it for better sleep, better thermoregulation. And uh, I can't say enough good things about 8 Sleep. I just, the, the Pod Pro cover is one of the best things that's ever happened to me in terms of, of uh, my sleep. And I know how important it is. So yeah, check it out. 8sleep.com slash iOS. All right, back from the break. And now it is time to talk about a very exciting return uh, to the, the apps uh, that Apple kind of collectively names iWork. That's your pages, numbers, and uh, keynote for writing text documents for uh, spreadsheet stuff and for making presentations. Um We've got mail merge. Rosemary, for the young folks who are tuning in today, can you tell are you them- calling me old, Micah? Are you calling me old? <laughs> I'm calling us old. I'm calling us old because <laughs> I uh, I remember being excited about it. And then uh, my partner, who's 
uh, a few years younger than me was like, what, what is mail merge? I don't know what that is. And then I had this realization of like, oh, right. We're very excited about mail merge, but some folks might not know what that is. So tell us what mail merge is in general before we get into being able to use it now with uh, your iWork suite. Yeah. So imagine that you need to send 10 letters to 10 people. I'm pretty much all the information in the letters is going to be about the same, give or take. But for example, you actually don't want the two to be the same name everywhere. And you don't want, um, you know, the little bits of information, maybe, you know, their kids' names or something to be the same. What you can do with mail merge is you can start by just writing a letter. And this um, here, if you're watching the video version, is um, uh, just the professional template that I've stolen. So it's, it's a a nonsense letter, but I could change various bits of this depending on who I'm writing to. Um, and I might want to change, you know, yours sincerely to something like kind regards, can't wait to see you next year, whatever it is, depending on who it is that I'm sending it to. A mail merge will allow me to replace those bits of information and create 10 different files with 10 different letters in which are all to those right people so that I don't have to copy the file and, you know, or maybe copy the contents and then paste it and then, you know, tweak the little bits and then, oh shoot, I forgot that, you know, um, I need to name both of Micah's dogs because this person only has one cat and I accidentally leave the word cat in the letter to Micah and everything <laughs> goes horribly, horribly wrong and I end up on Santa's naughty list. That's not what we want. Um, and so the idea behind mail merge is essentially creating lots of documents with, um, you know, that are based on the same sort of thing, but have unique bits of information in. But one way that I've used mail merge in the past, Micah, and this is going to show everybody how much of a nerd I am, but I'm okay with that, is I've used this to make custom printed planner pages, which have got dates in oh. um, and automatically changing the dates and, you know, mirroring pages left and right, um, depending on, you know, the, like the day of the week and stuff like that and things like that. Because mail merge isn't just for contact information. It can also just take any piece of information in a table, like a spreadsheet, and just merge it together. And it's great. And also, I'm just really excited that the iWork team have got developers working on pages who are working on this because they have done an amazing job. I am so pleased. If any of those developers are listening or if anybody knows anybody on the iWork team and can pass a message along to those developers, please say thank you because this feature is really cool. They don't limit you to contacts. They let you use contacts and spreadsheets together so that you can just do whatever it is that you want or need, which I'm just really excited by. Um, so I'll, I'll go back to this letter. And if you tap on the three dots in the top right, so um, ac uh, across over here, we've got, you know, formatting, adding something, sharing, and then the three dots, which are all of the extra little nerdy things that you actually probably want, like presenter mode, but you don't necessarily need to see every five minutes. In here, we've got mail merge. And so to start with, it's automatically highlighting. And the reason why I picked this template is because I know it's ready for mail merge. Um, so it's highlighting some information. So you can see that there's green and there's blue to start with. Okay, so green is from and blue is to. So I can have, um, you know, I could actually send the same letter from four different people if I wanted to. I'm not sure what the use case for that would be, but that would be an option. And so I can have this replace various bits of information for me. Um, and I can say, you know, merge, and then it will ask if I can access my contacts. Um, and so I'll say yes, and then I would have to select something. But what I've also done is I've got a spreadsheet. And so I'll just quickly create a, a new document and I'll create one from that same template just so that I can show people um, selecting the spreadsheet. It was a professional letter template. And hopefully this won't take very long now because the template is already downloaded. So if I just pop into here and then mail merge, then what I can do, um, or what I did before, um, is um, I selected a spreadsheet. And when you select a spreadsheet, you can select a numbers file. And so I happen to have one here in my research in recent called the Probability Lab, which I'll just uh, quickly open in numbers. This is, again, one of the demo spreadsheets so that people can try um, the same things. Um, and here it is. Um, and this just has uh, a table in it which contains uh, a row log, which is what I was going to use. So row one and then which die um, and then the sum of the, the outcome so that as I add more information, I can do more things. Now, this is not necessarily going to be the, uh, you know, most exciting letter I've ever written, I have to say. Um, but I can just fill in these bits of information automatically from this 
table. Um, and so I'll do that. Um, and what I'll do is um, I'm actually just going to select my full name and I'll just have that input the uh, full name everywhere instead of all my personal details, um, just because I'm not quite sure what contacts is set up to on this device. Right. Um, and now I will select uh, my contact one moment and just uh, pop down to that. There we go. Um, and now I can tap the merge button. And so it's doing some merging. It's getting crazy. And you can see it's doing at a very rapid pace, a hundred of these because there's a hundred rows in the spreadsheet. Um, and this folks is not a brand new 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This is an old second generation iPad Air. Um, and it's done that. And so now moment of truth, merge complete. Would you like to view the merge document now? If I tap open, then um, it will have... Um, in a moment when it's uh, finished. There we go. It's got all of this information. So these 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 numbers here, 1167, that is actually information straight out of the spreadsheet. Um, oh, nice. So row one, die one, um, die two got six, and then the sum is seven. And that is the information and it's been pulled out and popped into this uh, document. And then we scroll down and the second row and the third row and the fourth row and so on. And I'm just really excited by this because there's just so many different use cases for taking data from a spreadsheet and merging that into a document of some kind and creating, you know, a better document with it without having to copy and paste lots of bits of information. And then you update the spreadsheet and things change. No, mail merge is the solution to this problem. And I am thrilled that this is back. And not only is this back, it's here on my iPad, it's on my iPhone, and it's on the Mac as well, of course, um, because uh, unfortunately, Mail Merge originally went away when we got a brand new version of Pages on the Mac, um, which is much closer to the iOS and, iPhone, uh, and iPad OS app. I don't know how much code is shared between them, but what I know is the Pages team have just absolutely knocked it out of the park with this, and I'm, I'm thrilled to see that they are continuing to deliver such great work. Um, with all this and that mail merge is back. It might be a nerdy feature, but you know what? For those people who need it, it is so worth having. And Pages is free for everybody who has an iPhone or an iPad or a Mac. Um, so, you know, what better way to give people great tools and make them free and make them great? Agreed. Um, all right, folks, with that, we have reached the end of the segment on writing smarter with iPhone and iPad. We've got a little bit of news uh, before we head into Shortcuts Quarter and the feedback and questions uh, for the show and round things out with our app caps. Um, up first, uh, just to, to kind of round out the updates to... Apple's iWork suite, um, on top of being able to do mail merge in these different applications, um, it's fun that uh, Keynote has added these kind of visual movement backgrounds for slides. So I, uh, when I learned about this, I created a, a mock slideshow and it's a very subtle effect. These things just kind of slowly move in the background. And I think the idea there is that a lot of times, um, particularly if you're giving a talk or something like that, your first slide might be up on screen for a long time. And so just having some nice subtle movement in the background is pretty great. And it does give you the ability to um, kind of change the speed of the animation and the kind of random seed of the animation to just add to it. So it's a generated effect uh, that just plays in the background and kind of keeps some movement going just so that it's a little bit more pleasing. Uh, with that comes some new types of uh slide templates so you can create a project that kind of works for you and is designed to work with these new um, backgrounds that are dynamic, as they say. Uh, there's also an option to skip or unskip slides if you have them in a collapsed group. So you might have a whole presentation and as you're going through, you're like, oh, I'm talking to this group of people and they don't care about uh, this specific feature. I'm talking to the dog people. So all of my cat slides can just be kind of hidden and skipped whenever I do my presentation. Um, numbers uh, gets some updates, including the ability to uh, insert rows and columns that are already like if they're big, 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 big tables, adding rows and columns would take a little while to do. The processing would take a little while. So the, the performance has been improved there. And of course, um, 
the mail merge features that have come to pages uh, are linked as Rosemary showed with numbers. And so that has been improved as well. And then for pages along with um, the mail merge feature, uh, it also has some new templates for um, some certificates and event invitations. And you can export uh, page documents as simple, straight up uh, .txt files, text files. So some good updates there to the uh, iWorks sweet, but I think the big focus was on mail merge. Now, Rosemary, this next one is an interesting one from iMore. Uh, the headline says, Chrome wants to take over your iPhone passwords. What does that mean? Well, it's one of those headlines that's very deliberately designed to make you go, wait, what? Take over my passwords? No. Um, but it's actually a little bit sneakier than that. It's basically on Mac OS and Windows, of course, Chrome has a feature where it can save your passwords. But on iOS, Apple doesn't just let any old app save your passwords. You know, they have to, you know, be properly authenticated and have keychain integration to do so. And what Apple, uh, what Google is doing is they are adding keychain support to Chrome on iOS. So the inside of the settings area where some of you may have set up one password or last pass who frequently sponsors the Twit network um, before, then you can now add, or you will be able to add, um, if you have it installed, you'll be able to set up um, the uh, Chrome in the keychain, um, which is just um, a nice feature to have that will be available for those people. Um, now, of course, this comes at an interesting time as passwords built into iOS are getting stronger and stronger. There's um, the new pass keys coming out with iOS 16, which I've been playing with. They're pretty good. Um, and of course, there's support for two-factor authentication, notes um, on uh, accounts and more built into iOS. But what Google is attempting to do is to make it so that if you use Chrome everywhere, all of your passwords are everywhere as well, which I have to say is certainly safer than putting them on a post-it. So if you've got um, friends and relatives who love using Chrome and won't use Keychain because they've got um, a, a Windows device and they just want all of their passwords in one place, then consider suggesting that they uh, use this Chrome feature when it upgrades, uh, when it releases um, and is available to everyone because this way they can actually have decent passwords everywhere. And, you know, it, it's certainly less safe uh, than, than bad old post-it notes. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I would say good old post-it notes because I love post-it notes. They're great, but not for passwords, Micah, not for passwords. Yeah, definitely not for passwords. Uh, and then the last bit of news is uh, a way to use Keynote to make GIFs. What? I didn't know this was possible. Yeah, this is really cool. So what you can do in Keynote, um, and I have to say Keynote is a great application for this because it's already got animations built in for slides and so on. So as you transition from this slide to that slide, you can move things. Um, Keynote on macOS and I believe on iOS uh, now has a great feature called Magic Move. Um, and I don't know if you've ever used that, Micah, but imagine mm -hmm. that you've got um, a slide and you've got a rectangle in the top right-hand corner. And then on the next slide, you want it to be in the bottom left-hand corner, but twice the size. Well, you can create, like duplicate the slide and then add a magic move feature uh, animation to it and then just resize that rectangle on the next size and it will just automatically move and resize it as it transitions to the next slide. It's amazing for so many reasons and it looks incredibly professional when you're doing things like that. And now you can take that, you can export it as a GIF so that you can share it on Twitter. Um, so I really like that. That That's a really neat little feature. It's just... Um, when you've when you've got a presentation and I've just uh, pulled up Keynote um, on my iPad here, so I should be able to uh, pick the color gradient. I love that uh, theme because that is just so pretty. Um, when you've created something, then um, it will hopefully uh, allow me to export it as a GIF. Oh no, it's taking a very long time to load. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any demo of, uh, 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 slideshows available, but it is a uh, it's it's a pretty neat feature. I, I like it. I have used this sort of thing before um, and I've exported it as videos and then used shortcuts to convert it. Um, but uh, now now you don't need to do that. So I'll just uh, add another slide and another slide. And then if you tap the three dots, then there's export and then animated GIF and whatever your uh, your settings are, you know, you can auto advance, you can make it really slow, really fast. Um, you can change your frame rate. You can select which slides 
or what range of slides should be included and how big it should be, and then export it. This is going to be the world's crummiest animated image ever <laughs> because I had no animations in there because I created it really quickly. But you know what? It exists. So I can maybe make something better for next time. All right. Well, um, up next, we have Shortcuts Corner, but I do want to take one more quick break so I can tell you about the awesome folks. We've talked about them before on iOS Today. Uh, the awesome folks at Nomad who are sponsoring this week's episode of iOS Today. Nomad's founders, they met in Santa Barbara and uh, in California, and they started as a Kickstarter project in 2012. Their goal was to build ultra rugged and minimalist tools for the 21st century that would seamlessly integrate into your everyday carry. So you may have heard about everyday carry, this idea that there are things that you carry with you every day, perhaps a pen uh, and your, your phone and all the different devices that you have. And so Nomad took that idea and wanted to make it so that you could buy these different devices um, or, well, of course, buy the devices you have, but then buy accessories that work so well with them. And I wanted to highlight something that I think um, a lot of people who watch this show would be into. Uh, it tends to be the in my experience that I, along with many other uh, super sort of techie people, are not into... Um, screen protectors because we know first that the uh, glass that's on the iPhone is a very strong glass um, and it has uh, some like an oleophobic coating, meaning that the oil uh, won't stick around. If you could just wipe it away, then it will wipe away the oil. But people who maybe are uh, you know, have are more active and they they go places regularly, or they're just prone to dropping their devices. Are after a way to protect their devices, and so I wanted to highlight the Nomad screen protector. This is a uh, tempered glass screen protector, and what I love about this, um, and also their packaging is pretty great. But check this out. It comes with a way to, depending on what phone you have, um, you lay this down on top of your phone and then it helps you perfectly place the screen protector right exactly precisely where it needs to go on the screen. That is so important when it comes to screen protectors. Otherwise they get those annoying bubbles and it's just uh, not as, as clean or as safe uh, an experience. And it also means that there could be issues with you being able to actually tap the screen because of the fact that there's a screen protector on top of it. Um, they also have uh, some excellent Apple watch bands. So this is a beautiful, they call it Sage. This is a beautiful Sage green Apple watch band. This is their sport, um, sport slim band. So they have, uh, they had a sport band before that was a little bit wider. This one is uh, a lot thinner and it has that same kind of tuck in closure, uh, that you will get with the Apple watch bands. But I do love that the pin is, uh, longer. So the fastening is a lot better. And again, this nice, case that it comes in. Um, and then what else? Did, oh, I, okay. This is perhaps my favorite thing. They just came out with this and I, unfortunately I can't show it to you because it is on my app, my Apple TV remote right now, but I'll show you the box. This is the, um, what do they call it? The Ashland Brown, uh, leather cover for the new Siri remote. And it is this beautiful leather cover that you you pop your uh, Apple Siri remote into, and it it's it's a lot taller. So whenever you're holding it, it's a lot more ergonomic in your hand. It's nice and smooth on the bottom. It's made with leather. But what makes this so magical is it has a slot for you to place an AirTag in it. Finally, you can track down your Apple TV remote. There we go. We're showing it now. Uh, this thing is so cool. You pop in the AirTag, you pop the remote over the top of it, and you might be going, oh, but then it's so thick. No, 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 no. That is very nice because in your hand, that feels so good to be able to hold it, and it, it feels sort of uh, substantial in your hand, which is so important. Um, and then I want to mention that uh, Nomad makes some of the best cables on the market. Uh, these Kevlar uh, constructed cables that have um, 
the, the best kind of charging speeds that you can imagine. Uh, this one, which is a universal cable, it's USB-C and USB-C, but it has a micro and a USB-A option. So that's micro B and USB-A option that you can slide onto the end of it. This does a hundred watt power transfer. And so you can switch between the two different types. If you just need a USB-C to USB-C cable, fine, but you can pop on that USB-A on one side if you need to, and on the other side, if you need to. And then, as I mentioned, this one, this is a lightning cable to USB-C. So this one is very good for uh, being able to charge your iPhone or an older iPad. Um, all sorts of amazing accessories. The last thing I'll mention, uh, just because it's a neat uh, thing that they have, is they actually make, Nomad makes a pen. And I think this is uh, this is just, it's it's very weighty. Uh, in a good way. For people who really like pens, you know how important weight is when it comes to that. Um, the the locking mechanism is really satisfying, so it's kind of a fun fidget toy. And I can't remember what they use. Um, oh, Schmidt Easy Flow 9000 is the cartridge that they use. And boy, howdy, does it write well, um, being able to write with this pen, the because of the weight, it, you barely have to press, um, and it just glides along. So I had to give a mention to the pen. There's nothing uh, tech about the pen itself, but for a person who appreciates like Apple's design and manufacturing, this pen will become your will quickly become your favorite pen, uh, at least ballpoint pen. Of course, I love my fountain pens still, but. Love this pen. So lots of fun stuff you can find over at Nomad, all well worth it. And I should also mention that they are a climate neutral certified brand. So when you're shopping there, you can feel good about that as well. Um, and a quick mention for their 30 watt and 65 watt GAN adapters. So if you are looking for kind of the latest technology for charging and charging quickly uh, and charging to the best of your device's abilities, then that is helpful. Um, I just, mm, I love the smell of their leather. Uh, uh, I love the the cases, the way that they age over time, the watch bands. Um, I've got leather watch bands, and I've talked before about my AirPods Pro that have a case from Nomad that is just gorgeous. Uh, all of that's so good. You can go to nomadgoods.com uh, slash iOS today and use the promo code iOS today for 10% off your first purchase of any Nomad accessory. That's nomadgoods.com slash iOS today with the promo code iOS today. This is a limited time offer, so head there. There, get there, get there, and check these things out. You got to got to get a, a watch band, or I think everybody deserves to have Nomad cables. Um, I have a, a chair that has like five wheels, um, five or six wheels, and I have to you know move it back and forth. And sometimes I'll run over one of these Nomad cables, and I don't have to worry about it. It's not it's not a big deal. Um, so I am slowly but surely replacing all of my cables with Nomad cables because they're just so good. So again, nomadgoods.com slash iOS today with the promo code iOS today. Uh, thank you, Nomad Goods. Now let's head into Shortcuts Corner. Shortcuts Corner is the part of the show where you write in with your shortcuts requests and Rosemary Orchard, the shortcuts expert, provides a response for you. All right. Our first Shortcuts Corner request comes in from uh, Tom. And Tom writes, I love the show and watch every week. I have a shortcut question for Rosemary. I would like to have a shortcut on my iPhone that sets the phone to mirror the screen to my Apple TV and then launch the Shoot app. This would allow me to go directly to sharing the iPhone camera into my HDMI switcher without a multiple command setup. Thanks again, Tom. P.S. Attached is a kitten tax portrait of Luna when she was 10 weeks old before she... Oh, my Lord. Heterochromia on a kitty cat? And those... Uh, for folks who are listening and not watching, heterochromia is when uh, the eyes are two different colors. Uh, heterochromia as opposed to homochromia, which is what most people have where both of our eyes are the same color. And yes, she has not yet grown into her ears or frankly, her paws either. So she's so cute. Hello, Luna. Anyway, look, I'm getting distracted by the kitten tax. Um, remember, we have a pet tax that you aren't required to pay, but you're strongly suggested to pay by including photos of your adorable pets uh, along with the, the request that you have. So Rosemary, um, 
I have to tell you, this one sounds complicated, but maybe I'm overthinking things. What is going on here with Tom? So Tom wants to be able to just have his uh, iPad or iPhone mirror the display to the Apple TV and open the Shoot app. Now, opening an app, that's the easy bit. Unfortunately, the tricky bit, which I have run into, is the mirroring of the display because I've tried a number of different things. Um, and there is something involving AirPlay, which seems like it might work, which is change your playback destination. But this, unfortunately, if you tap on the little icon on the left-hand side of the action and then you tap show info, or you can tap on the little eye bubble in the, the menu over on the right when you are looking at the actions to see this info, it says that it changes the current playback destination, use this action to route audio to AirPods, Bluetooth speakers, blah, 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 blah. And you'll know it specifically says audio. It doesn't say video. Um, and that's unfortunate because if we look under screen, well, I can take a screenshot. Um, I can set a switch control. I can go to my home screen. Um, but mm, unfortunately, there's not a lot of actions. So the only part of this that I can do via a shortcut, which isn't really going to help Tom unless he's trying to use this via an NFC tag on his iPhone, is to open an app, um, which is um, the you know, the the shoot app in his case. Uh, I don't have that app, um, but um, I can uh, just open any app. Of course, you can just tap and then you've got a list of all of the apps on your, your phone. So you can just, for example, have it open the books app. But the one thing I would like to uh, remind folks is that you can do screen sharing by your control center. Um, and so um, for me, mirroring is already set up because I'm sharing my screen back to my my Mac so that I can share it uh, with everybody who's watching the video stream here on iOS today. But this little act, uh, this little button next to the lock button uh, is what you can use for um, screen mirroring or screen sharing, uh, depending on what it is that you're doing. And so take a look at that. And hopefully, Tom, the control center will speed things up for you. And then you can just use that to help speed things up. Hopefully, um, you can then just use that to wake up your Apple TV. But if not, um, then you can, don't forget, use the Apple TV options here in Shortcuts to wake your Apple TV. Um, and similarly, there's one for sleeping the Apple TV afterwards um, or launching the screensaver, whatever your preference. But right now, we don't have options for mirroring your display I can kind of understand why from a privacy perspective. Um, I can <laughs> yeah. imagine that somebody um, who knows that you use this particular app for your journal, setting up a, a, sh a shortcut on your device that automatically mirrors it to their Apple TV so they can see everything you write in your journal, not being a great sibling prank. But, you know, yeah. there, there's plenty of options out there. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, that will work. And if not, then I'll take another look at iOS 16 and see if we can figure something out um, for you for, um, for that one. All right. So the next one comes in from Micah Sargent. Um, you had mentioned earlier that you would be willing to uh, show kind of how one could use shared notes and uh, launching an app to work together for uh, a specific experience. In this case, I'll just explain if folks were tuned out earlier. Um, I send the same bit of text as an instruction to my Instacart uh, delivery folks every time. And so I always go into the notes, copy the text that I'm going to send, and then you know paste it and and send it into them via the chat. Uh, there's not currently a way. I wish there was for um, Instacart to tie into shortcuts because if there was, it's like when the person starts shopping your order, send this message. That would be so cool. Alas, there's not. But Rosemary, you think you might be able to simplify the process a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I do. So I have just very quickly created a demo shared note. Now, I should note this note isn't actually shared with anybody. It's just a note because the note wouldn't need to be shared with anybody for this to work. You can do this with whatever you like. Um, so the important thing is, is that there is something unique in this note that I can use to find it again. And so I'm going to use the title of this note to do that. Um, and so I, as you can see, I'm attempting to stimulate Micah's um, instructions to get to his home. Unfortunately, I don't have a map of where Micah <laughs> Sergeant lives. So I've substituted with this amazing cookie stack from a that great place really called Dude good. Sweets. 
it's it was a triple chocolate cookie um with um like a cookie frosting uh, or a chocolate frosting in between and then another triple chocolate cookie on the bottom with pumpkin seeds. I so thought delicious. those were pumpkin seeds. Oh, yummy. So delicious. I love pumpkin seeds. Highly recommend it. Uh, and the shop's name is called Toot Sweets, um, which is just an amazing combination of French and Chichiti Bang Bang all together. But either way, um, so now I've got my note, I need to create a personal automation. And then inside of my personal automation, I'll use the app. And we're specifically, we want to do this when a particular app is opened. Now for Micah, that's the Instacart app. I don't have Instacart. That doesn't exist over here. And I don't necessarily want to open a shopping app to demo everything for iOS today. So I'll choose books. Um, but, you know, you'll do this for whatever app is the most appropriate. And then we need to find our note. Um, so there is an action called find notes. And so I can add a note. I can say I want to find all notes. Um, and if I already had find notes, and then I could add another filter. Um, but here, then I can just add a filter and just say, okay, right. What do I want to do? Okay. I, am I looking in a particular folder? Quite possibly. Am I looking for something particular in the body? Or in this case, I'm doing name. And now in Micah's case, I would suggest that he combines a folder and the name for this. Um, mm. And so I'll just pop that in with that. Um, and so now if I run this, um, it will just quickly uh, go ahead and look at it. And it's showing me just a plain text version, but this is fine. Now, one thing I would recommend just in case that you've got multiple um, is just to set a limit um, to one, um, just okay. in case something extra, like you've duplicated it by accident or something. Um, and you can also sort by, and this is one I definitely rec recommend, last modified date with uh, the latest first, just in case you duplicate it and then you edit the new one. That's the one you're going to want to get, isn't it? Um, and now I just need a copy to clipboard action. And that's it. That's all I need to do. I need to find the note and then copy it to the clipboard. Um, and and then we're done. So the only thing I would recommend here, expand the copy to clipboard action and uh, just toggle on local only, because this means that if you have that universal clipboard feature, it's not like if you're pasting something on your iPad in, in a moment and you've already copied something, it's not going to paste your Instacart delivery instructions. You don't want that Got happening. It. Yeah. You could do an expire at where you adjust your date and time and add, say, a minute into the future and then expire it. But I don't know how the Instacart app works and that's that's probably a little bit um, over the top for most people anyway. So tap next, turn off ask before running because you really don't want to be asked for this and you don't necessarily want or need a notification. And so that's it, done. Um, and so now I just need to open the books app, um, which I will do by a spotlight. So da -da -da -da, books, there it is. Um, and now this will have done some magic in the background. Um, and, um, you know, we, we don't even see anything. It's not necessarily done a thing. And if you want to see that it's done something, then I would recommend, I wouldn't say actually that in the automation, cause there is turn on notify when run. I wouldn't do that. I would add a custom notification, um, where you can, um, or a motivation apparently <laughs> according to my typing skills today. Um, so let's just change that quickly to an N. Oh no, it's my iPad being a bit sticky. There we go. Um, so notification, um, and then it'll say whatever it is that you want it to say. Um, I will just leave it with the default hello world um, and tap out of edit the automation. Oh dear. Sorry, this iPad apparently really, really, really needs an upgrade. Um, it does need to install the latest iOS 15 on it. Um, and... Uh, Shortcuts is apparently a little bit stuck. But either way, I've added that notification. So um, once I've saved that, next time I open this, um, it will it will send me the notification. Um, and then um, I'll just uh, pop into, uh, well, why not the notes app um, and create a brand new note. And then if I paste, uh, it should have added the contents. Now it's struggling a little bit because it's stuck, but I assure you that this does indeed work. Yes, um, so that yes. next time, next time you uh, want to do something like that, then you can easily copy and paste those instructions without having to go find them every time. Because I imagine that that is, um, you know, something that's a little bit annoying at times. There we go. That's that's finally updated. Um, so next time I do that, that will work perfectly, hopefully. And then beautiful. You know, I can. I, I can will test definitely it in be here setting with the play. Right. <laughs> so then it finds that first note uh, that you made, and then. Mm -hmm. In theory, it, it will to copy the it to the clipboard. And then in theory, it will show a notification saying, hello now, world. Now, I should know, 
I don't have it showing notifications because I'm in my podcasting focus mode. But if I pop into the notification center, then I can there see. There it is. It Hello says, world. Yeah. So uh, it should just be that if I pop in here and then tap the paste, um, I think my clipboard is a little bit broken on the iPad. I think it needs a restart, Micah. Um, but, no worries. Uh, that's, that's, I believe that's you that That's the curse of work. running uh, developer betas on some devices and not other devices. <laughs> Yes, they all are kind of uh, trying to work together to make it happen. All right, folks, with that, it is time for our app caps. <laughs> this is the part of the show where we wear caps atop our heads to honor our app or gadget picks of the week. These are the apps or gadgets we are using uh, that we want to share with all of you because we think they are worth your time. So with that, let's kick things off. Rosemary Orchard, tell us about the cap atop your head and then tell us about your app cap. Well, the cap atop my head is... Uh... Well, it's amazing, basically. It is a, a berry style with a nice little brim. Um, and it's rainbow. It's rainbow stripes with sequins because why not? Uh, everybody always needs sequins. And the best part of this is most of my berries um, and similar items are usually really thick, warm ones for winter. So I wouldn't be able to wear them at this time of year. Um, but it's the end of June, the end of Pride Month. So I have a lovely warm, uh, not so warm rainbow berry, which is going to help me keep cool. And keeping cool is kind of, you know, the the idea behind the app that I'm looking at today, which is all about, you know, keeping up to date with the music information, because I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to and watching iOS today, remember the good old days of liner notes. Remember when you would get um, an LP um, or any kind of vinyl and you, you would sit and you'd actually read because, you know, these were decent sized discs, there would be a chunk of information on the back of it or something inside of it. And then we moved on to CDs and they'd have things like lyrics or a bit of information about the band or the album or something in there. And that's kind of gone away with Spotify and Apple Music, but not completely. It actually still exists. And so the app that I would like to show everyone is Music Smart Liner Notes. And so um, on this device, I don't have uh, much music in my uh, music library, but if I were to just add something and I'm going to go, I'm going to have to uh, go from the, the top mic out because of course, that's how music works. So I'm going to go alphabetically and I'm just going to try and uh, grab the, uh, it looks like the music app has disappeared on this iPad. Oh dear. Um, uh, but I'll gr just grab Atomic by Blondie because that is, of course, uh, a great uh, alphabetical option being near the top of the alphabet. And when I add that, then it will show up in Music Smart, um, allowing me to go ahead and read those liner notes because sometimes you do just want to be able to like read a bit of information about this piece of music that, you know, this album that this artist has put together, what is it that they were thinking of or looking for when they were trying to create this? Usually there's a story behind it, or sometimes there isn't a story and they just want to, you know, show off cool pictures of their pets. That's fine. You know, it's, it's always nice to see pictures of people's pets. Um, so, um, you know, we, we have those options. Um, and, um, oh, my iPad is now playing some music, which is not quite what I wanted to do. Um, there we go. So, uh, I'll just, uh, show adding the, uh, the album. Um, I do actually, uh, already have this album. Um, but there we go. That album is now in my library. So it should, uh, pop up over here in music smart. Now I've added my music library through Apple music. Um, and it is just going to take a moment to sync and you can see it'll get data from various different places. So it gets it from Apple Music. It also gets it from the movie database, Genius, which is the system that Apple has incorporated into what used to be iTunes and is now music to try and get information. I'm sure people remember back in the day, if you had uh, a CD and you ripped it, then it would try and get all that information automatically for you. So it would have the track information, the album artwork and stuff. And that was using a system called Genius. And then Discogs um, is another source as well. So it actually uh, gets information from all of those places. And uh, I'm just going to uh, try uh, quitting it and reopening it because I have a feeling that the music app not being stalled uh, confused it for a moment when I used it. There we go. Um, so now it now it's finding lots of different things. So I will just select uh, something um, not entirely random, hopefully. Um, I guess I don't have a lot of choice. Uh, the Age of Plastic by The Buggles. There we go. Um, mm -hmm. So video killed the radio star. Um, but if I go in, I can see, you know, all the tracks on this album. I can see um, 
some information about the artist if it were found. Um, and then there would be more information if that were available. Um, so Songs of Innocence, of course, the one that Apple infamously gave to everybody else um, is one where I can see, you know, all the tracks and the artist information as well. And then I can go from there to popular songs. And in this case, they've given me the description of everything. They're linking out to YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, if I want to complain about how this album has magically appeared in my library and that I didn't want it. Um, actually, Apple's the right people to complain to there. Um, and then yeah, I can There's see some popular so much. songs. Yeah, there's so I, I much just information I can get with this. Oh yeah. my god, this is amazing! Like it even goes as far as to link to podcast episodes talking about certain yeah. uh, tracks. Oh my god, this is yeah. so cool. Yeah, so this is really great. And what I also like is the little headphones icon. You can have it automatically update to what to whatever is now playing. So kind of like you know jukeboxes um, did, where they would you know manually flip over the album artwork but it can also do music recognition through Shazam so say you are somewhere out in the real world where people are playing music through speakers oh my gosh what a crazy concept um but then you can use the music recognition on this app to automatically pick up on whatever's playing and get you some more information on it which I just feel is a great feature um and music smart is only 199 in the app store um and the developer actually has a bunch of great apps um out there that you can you can play with but this is one of the ones that I just found and I immediately sent a copy of it to my dad um because he is always looking for more information about various artists and so on that he loves and this just seemed like a great way to give him that for his birthday um yeah. so yeah music smart liner notes why not get back all of that information that we always used to have available in the CDs but without having the things that we need to dust and you know the ability to scratch those wonderful things, especially LPs. Oh gosh, a scratched LP was just such a sad thing. I remember that from when I was very small, my parents had them and I, I wanted to play with one and like wobble it and and the look on my dad's face, I just didn't even like that. No, 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 I would have been in so much trouble if I'd done that. <laughs> oh, I love this. Um, I am going to just lose my whole day in this uh, in this app. Very I'm cool. Sorry, Music Micah. Smart. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, everyone a- at Twit. I've <laughs> just okay. distracted Micah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't do Mac Break Weekly today. I've got to look at all of these music liners. Um, anyway, that is a very cool app. $1.99, well worth it. I've downloaded it and I'm going to get it on my iPad so I can see the text even clearer. And oh, that's so cool. So cool. Um, so the cap atop my head is one that I actually wore to San Francisco Pride. Um, I had a pink, purple, and blue outfit as those are the colors of the uh, by Pride flag. Um, and this purple cap kept most of my face protected, but my nose was still getting a lot of sun. So if you're watching today and like, wow, his nose is very red. Yeah, that's because I got sunburned. Um, Not great, but the hat I love uh, and plan to wear even outside of uh, that event. It's uh, it's, it's a nice hat. So um, the app that I want to talk about is actually a special shout out. It is an app for your Apple TV that was just recently released, and it is Tech News Weekly on the Apple TV. Um, our web engineer and uh, Apple TV developer, uh, Patrick Delahanty, has created the Tech News Weekly app or, or updated the Apple TV app uh, for Tech News Weekly. So you can tune in and watch episodes whenever you want of uh, Tech News Weekly. So it's pulling in that feed, making those available to you right there. And I love that it uh, has all of the you know modern UI of uh, Apple TV and tvOS. So for example, in that second screenshot, if you are watching, um, for those listening, it's just a screenshot on the Apple TV page and it shows, um, the different people that are in this episode. So it's got Jason Howell, Micah Sargent, and our, uh, two guests, uh, who are listed there. So really neat that you can kind of get an idea before you even watch the episode, who's involved, get the summary, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, as Patrick is noting in the Discord right now, it uses the API so you can get all of the episodes that have ever existed uh, for that Tech News Weekly feed, which means that that includes Tech News Today episodes as well. So if you ever want to go back and watch some of those, you can. Uh, it's free to download, again, available in the App Store. Uh, so you can look it up on Apple TV or find it on your iPhone and install it on your Apple TV that way uh, and check out Tech News Weekly. And uh, I believe there are a few other apps that exist there, including uh, Hand on tech um 
which will have some of our reviews and things in the past. So pretty exciting stuff. Uh, Tech News Weekly gets its own Apple TV app. Perhaps one day iOS today will have its own Apple TV app. That's a hint, hint. Um, anyway, thank you all for tuning in to this week's episode of iOS Today. We love having you join us live for the show every Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, uh, which you go to twit.tv slash live to get the show there. Uh, but the best way we think to get the show is to go to twit.tv slash iOS, because when you do, then you can subscribe to the show in its various formats. Uh, so that way you are able to subscribe via Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, all those different places. Uh, you just click subscribe to audio or subscribe to video and you're able to do it uh, that way. I also want to mention Club Twit. If you would like to support us and also get an ad-free experience, well, there is a way to do so. You just go to twit.tv slash Club Twit. And for seven bucks a month, you get every single one of Twitch shows ad-free. You get access to the Club Twit, uh, Twit Plus bonus feed that has extra content you won't find anywhere else, including behind the scenes, before the scenes, uh, before the show, I mean, after the show, uh, etc. as well as access to the members-only Discord server. That is a place where you can go to chat with your fellow Club Twit members. Uh, also, those of us here at Twit, in fact, Patrick is uh, letting us know that uh, there is a reason why iOS today is not yet in the Apple TV store. Um, and so if you want to know about that, well, then you just need to join Club Twit. Twit.tv slash Club Twit, seven bucks a month to hang out with us there. Uh, Rosemary Orchard, if folks want to follow you online and check out all of your great work, where should they go to do so? Well, the best place to go is rosemaryorchard.com, which has links to all the things I do all around the internet, including links back to this show, where we do make sure to put all of the links that we can in the show notes every week. So if you're looking for something and you go, wait, where is it? Try checking the iOS Today website. But you can also find me on Twitter um, at Rosemary Orchard and of course in the Club Twit Discord um, as Rosemary Orchard, where I'm always lurking and watching and uh, sometimes a bit slow to answer questions. There was an interesting one this week about uh, sharing PDFs um, and annotating them which maybe we can get back to in the future. But it's always uh, nice to see what people are asking. So yeah, keep an eye out Absolutely. for me there. Absolutely. All right. And you can find me at Micah Sargent on many a social media network or head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. Um, or you can check me out. It's actually quite a few places this week. Later today on MacBreak Weekly, I'll be hosting as Leo is out uh, tomorrow on Windows Weekly uh, and Thursday, Tech News Weekly and Saturday, um, uh, the, what's the show called? The Tech Guy, uh, which I host. It's a radio show heard around the world. I host with um, Leo Laporte, where we take your tech questions and answer them. Busy, busy, busy week ahead. Thank you for being a part of the start of this week. Mm -hmm. And we hope that you are writing smarter with your iPhone and your iPad. We will see you next time for iOS Today. Goodbye. Did you spend a lot of money on your brand new smartphone and then you look at the pictures on Facebook and Instagram and you're like... What in the world happened to that photo? Yes, you have. I know it happens to all of us. Well, you need to check out my show, Hands on Photography, where I'm going to walk you through simple tips and tricks that are going to help make you get the most out of your smartphone camera or your DSLR or mirrorless, whatever you have. And those shots are going to look so much better. I promise you. So make sure you're tuning in to twit.tv hop for Hands on Photography to find out more.